y'all. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. All right, so what have I got today? Well, I got a few fueling hacks to share with you guys. If you're new to my channel, I wanna introduce myself. My name's Melissa. I'm an independent certified Optavia coach. Um, Optavia is a whole uh, health and wellness program. It's not just a weight loss program. It's a health and wellness program, overall health. If you want any information about it, just click the little wellness form in my description box below, fill it out, it's really short. You can email me, private message me on Facebook, comment in this video, however you wanna do it. And I'd be happy to connect with you and tell you all about this program. Okay, so let's talk fueling hacks. All right, first of all, I gotta put my coach's hat on and I have to let you know, there are all kinds of fueling hacks and you'll find them all over everywhere. They're all over, you know, uh, pages like group pages. There's, you know, different websites that have them, all kinds of things. You know, your client support pages have all kinds of feeling hacks. There's feeling hacks all over YouTube. But the feeling hacks I encourage my clients to use are the ones that might change the um, texture or, you know, something like that of a fueling, but, but you're doing it without adding any ingredients. I didn't used to do that. I used to hack my feelings all the time with condiments and healthy fats and optional snacks. And I'm here to tell you that is a surefire way to throw yourself out of fat burn because it's really easy to not remember to track those things. Okay. So it's really best if possible to hack your feelings with no added ingredients. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna show you what I have over here and then your, your mind's gonna be blown. It's just gonna be blown. And I'm gonna tell you, all of these hacks came to me from clients that got super creative. All right, let me show you. As you can see here, all I have is fuelings right here. You see them? Water and a little bit of Pam olive oil just to spray my uh, dash griddler, my dash waffler that I am gonna use. I'm also gonna use my air fryer. You know, I can't really see it, but I am gonna use my air fryer for this. Um, you don't have to use this kind of air fryer, but, I, and, and I think some of these you might could do in the oven and it would work out just as well, but I do like the air fryer for getting things really crisp without having to use any fat. All right, so let's start with something simple. All right, the first thing I'm gonna start with is the peanut butter shake. Okay, sorry about the real uh, glare back there. It is a beautiful sunny day here in Texas, so the windows, we're just gonna, we're gonna have that haze. All right, so anybody that has watched me for even a minute knows I love me some peanut butter. Peanut butter and me are good friends from way back. So when I first started Plan, I, I just, you know, I gave it up, it wasn't on Plan, couldn't have it, but then I found out about this product called PB2 Powder. Um, you know, it's compliant, you can have it, it's considered an optional snack, but you know, every time I used it, I realized I was actually adding calories, adding things, because it's optional, it's not necessary. So one of my brilliant clients told me, she said, you know, you can just take the peanut butter shake and do all the things you're doing with the PB2. She's so stinking smart. That's why she became a coach. But anyway, let me show you. I love, okay, y'all y'all might think this is strange, but I love peanut butter with celery. I love to dip celery in peanut butter. I don't know. I don't know why. I just do. I like the crunchy with the kind of sweet, smooth peanut butter. I don't know. I just love it. So that's what I'm gonna show you first. So easy. Did you know you could turn your peanut butter shake into just peanut butter? And it's super easy, hold on. Got my celery, now I gotta make my peanut butter. So all you're gonna do, making sure everybody can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna pour my peanut butter shake right into my little bowl here, my little ramekin. Use my little measuring cup. I'm gonna start with three tablespoons of water and I'm just gonna add a little at a time until I get it the consistency I want. So let's just start right there. Look at that, look at how it's thickening up. I haven't even used three full tablespoons yet. All right, so let me just put a tiny bit more that's a little too thick. Now 
Y'all, I think that's perfect right there. That's a great consistency. I used two tablespoons of water. There it is, you guys. Look at that. I had to turn around so we're not in the glare. Okay, so yes, you are using an optional snack in this dish, but you're not using PB2 powder as your optional snack, which has 50 to 60 calories, has some carbs, has some fat. No, all you're using is celery which let's be real, I think it takes more energy to digest celery than there are calories in celery. So I think we're good. So let me just, I just wanna taste, hang on. There it is. It's really crunchy, y'all, sorry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and y'all, I'm gonna tell you, the peanut butter shake is actually pretty darn sweet. It, to me, it is sweeter than PB2 powder. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but all I do know is I'm able to enjoy peanut butter with my celery, and all I did was use a, a fueling and a very low-cal optional snack. Gotta try this one, y'all. Okay, I'm gonna have another bite. That's one of my favorites. Okay, y'all, and I am apologizing again for the glare. Okay, so my next peanut butter shake hack is this. It involves another shake. All right, if y'all ever watched me, y'all have probably seen me do this, where I fix my dark chocolate shake and I add PB2 powder to it. Well, this same brilliant client said, Melissa, just combine the peanut butter shake with the dark chocolate shake and make two separate shakes. And they taste like peanut butter chocolate, but you've only used a fueling, no optional snack. Brilliant. All right, well, let me show you how I do it. It's so easy, y'all. And this, this makes two fuelings. All right, in order to be precise, which you need to be, we are going to weigh this packet, these two packets, okay? So I'm gonna put this on the scale. Let me turn it on. Can you see it? All right, it's zero. Now I'm going to add my peanut butter shake. and my dark chocolate shake. That comes to 2.26, okay? So now we know it's 2.26, so half of that is gonna be 1.13. All right, so let's mix it up real good. Remember the 1.13, just gonna mix it up. You can use a little wire whisk if you want to to get it good and you know combined. Super simple. Now we've just created a new shake. It's a peanut butter dark chocolate shake. Yum, oh my gosh, y'all. Okay, now, back to the scale. Zero that out. Now we're gonna measure out one point, and always do it in here. Don't just put it in your shaker bottle with your water and ice or whatever you use, because if you do it wrong, then you, you've messed up. So I do it on here. So 1.13, because if I put a little too much, I can always take it out. But once it's in that shaker, or once it's in that uh, blender, it's hard to take out. Like that's a little too much. There, that's perfect. There we go, 1.13. Then I just put the lid on this, and I have this ready for another fueling. There we go. All right, I'm gonna go put some ice in water and mix up my new shake. And all the dogs came running, <laughs> because they heard the ice. All right, eight ounces of water. You can do a little less if you want to since you're putting ice in there. In fact, I think I probably will. I'll put six ounces. It's gonna make it a little thicker. And I don't like to dilute the yummy flavor with too much. Now, I'm just gonna pour this right in. Pop that on my blender and we'll have a shake. There's my shake, y'all. Look how thick it is. Can you see it? It's very thick. That's because I put, oh, hold on. I angled it down so y'all could see. That's because I put less water and more ice. Mm. It makes it really thick, y'all, and really yummy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a fun video. I'm getting to eat all the things. Okay, so now. <laughs> Because, you know, i got to try them. All right, so now let's move on to some savory options. Okay, hey guys, this next one takes a little bit of effort. Pardon the noise in the background of my air fryer. It's heating up. You're going to use two appliances. You're going to use your dash waffler, and you're going to use an air fryer. So there's, it's a step. 
it's, it's a couple steps, but y'all, it's actually really worth it because it's super simple. Um, one of my favorite comfort foods is french fries. I just love them. Um, but let's face it, they're just not good for us. Even once you're in maintenance, french fries are not good for us. You've got to find another way to enjoy potatoes. Take that beautiful vegetable and drop it in fat, fry it, ruins it. Okay, so here is a healthy version using one of your fuelings. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of times these hacks, you know, if you're going to turn this into that, it's, yeah, it's kind of a really poor substitute for it, but it'll do. It'll kind of scratch that itch, you know what I mean? But this one, it's just straight up good. I don't care who you are. It's good. So let me show you how I do it. And like I said, if I can find a way to mute the noise of my air fryer, I will, but otherwise, I'm sorry. Well, I decided to move over here and maybe that'll kind of dull the noise. So here we go. The first thing we're gonna do is mix up our mashed potatoes. You can use either one. You can use the garlic or you can use the sour cream and chive. It makes no difference. That's just total, you know, taste preference. All right, so let me get it in here, right into my bowl. And you're gonna add, whoops, you're gonna add what it says, a half cup of water. While you're mixing this up, you're letting your little dash griddler waffler heat up. All right, I'm gonna mix this up real good. Now these, I think you actually could do in your oven. You would just have to be preheating your oven to about 375 right now or 400 even, because they're gonna be done. They're gonna cook in here. They're gonna crisp in the air fryer or the oven. All right, so let's get those all mixed up. I usually let it sit and get just a little thicker before I pour it into the waffler. Okay, I just spritzed it a little bit with that Pam spray, and now I'm gonna make two waffles. I'm gonna put about half of it on here. Doesn't have to be perfectly even. Let's let that one cook, and then we'll make the second one. Okay, I think our first waffle, yep, it's ready. Look at that, it's a thing of beauty. We're just gonna pop that out and set it right here to cool, okay? And now we're gonna do our next one. I'm always afraid it's gonna stick, so I do do like a little tiny bit, you know, just, just in case. All right, now let's do the next one. See, I told you this is a, you know, this one's got some steps to it, but if you're home on a Saturday or a Sunday and you're like, you know, that sounds really good. I think I'm gonna make me some crunchy french fries. Then this is so worth it. All right, there we go. Here's a tip. I just realized my air fryer did not need to be on this entire time. I was thinking it was gonna take a lot longer to heat up. It's been heated up forever, so now it's just running. It's not cooking anything, it's just running. <laughs> But I don't want to turn it off because then I'd have to reheat it. So this shouldn't take very long. Oh, <laughs> I wish y'all could have just seen what I saw. Scott, do you see? <laughs> I've got to see if I can get a picture of that. Hold on. I missed it. <laughs> I can explain it. So y'all know, if y'all follow me on Facebook or, or anywhere, y'all know that, uh, you know, we got Maisie and she's in that little time of her life. And so she's been having to wear a diaper. And <laughs> she just ran right past me and I thought, what has she got? She had her diaper hanging out of her mouth. So she took it off, picked it up and ran in there to Scott and gave it and just dropped it in front of him. And he just put it back on her. Here, I'll let you see. Maisie. She's embarrassed. She didn't want to be on camera. <laughs> okay, let's go check our waffle. Hey, I think our second waffle is done. Oh yeah, it's very done. All right. Okay, now let me just say, you could stop right here and eat these just like they are. These are awesome. Just like this, this one got really crispy, so it's like a huge waffle fry. They're still soft, more like a bread texture than they would be a fry. Putting them in the air fryer like I'm about to do, and you could do whole ones, I guess, and have really crispy. I cut them up into fries. Let's go do that, and then you're going to, I know I'm just showing you half me. You're, <laughs> you're going to be amazed. Okay, here we go. Just 
just going to lay them on my tray. You'll see. I'm always afraid y'all can't see what I'm doing because I can barely see. I need to take a class on how to do a YouTube video. I've only been doing this for two years, y'all. Seriously. You'd think I'd be better at it by now. Okay. There they are. I'm going to pop them in here. This thing's nice and hot because it's been going forever. All right. And I put it on the very top tray. No, oh, y'all can't even see it. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> so I put it on the very top tray where things get nice and crispy. Think back to the very first time I used it and Scott ate the charcoal sausage. Yeah, that's because I cooked it on that very top tray. So I've got these intentionally on the top tray and I'm only going to cook them for probably about three minutes. Um, maybe longer, but I'll check them. And they're going to be super crispy. Yeah, look at that. OMG. They're really hot. Let me put them on my plate. Hold on. There they are, y'all. Can you see them? All right. This is the real test, though. You ready? You listen. Turn your volume up. <laughs> Uh-huh. That has like a sour cream and onion french fry. So good. Okay, y'all. You can eat it just like this. This is a fueling. You have to add nothing to it. If you have a condiment that you can use for the day and you want to have a little sugar-free ketchup, go for it. Go for it. Absolutely. But you don't have to add anything. He's making a lot of noise. He was really noisy. <laughs> he just shut it off his door. All right, y'all. Uh -huh. Yeah, these are good. Okay. Okay, after all my little nibbles, I'm probably going to have a full fueling in. All right, this next one I'm going to use the Cheesy Mac. Uh, let's see, what is it? The What is it called? The next one I'm going to use the uh, Cheesy Buttermilk Cheddar, the macaroni and cheese. Um, y'all, I'm going to be honest. I've never done this one. I've never done this one. Someone told me to do this. We're going to see how it comes out. They say, now they add an herb to it. They add, I think, um, rosemary to it. I'm not going to add anything to it because I'm trying to do fueling hacks with no added ingredients. They like it because they said it tastes like, um, I don't know how I'm going to say this right, focaccia bread. Am I saying that right? <laughs> I never, I never always forget how to pronounce it. But anyway, they said it's got kind of a bread-like texture. So we're going to, we're going to just try this thing out. So all you do is you grind this up in a food processor or blender. I'm just gonna use my Nutribullet, and then they pour it in a bowl, add a little water, put it in their dash waffler, and cook it till it's crisp. So let's try it. Okay, it's all pulverized in there. It's a very cheesy powder. It's a very cheesy powder. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna put it in the bowl, add a little water, put it in my waffler, see what happens, y'all. Okay. Pour it in my bowl. There we go. Okay. I've got about a fourth of a cup of water here. I'm just going to add a little at a time until it gets the texture that I think it needs to be to pour in that waffle maker. I don't want it too runny, but, you know, thin enough to pour in there. Because she didn't actually tell me how much water to add. See, just adding a little water at a time to get a batter that's too thick. That's like cookie batter. Add a little bit more. And, you know, I would say, yes, you could add like garlic to this. You could add rosemary. You could add any kind of herb or spice you might want to add to flavor this. But then you're using a condiment. So I'm trying to do this with no added condiments. I think we're almost there. I've added almost four tablespoons, y'all. A little bit more. We're there. So I added, let's see. Oh, I only added three tablespoons of water, y'all. But just do it a little at a time, you know. So there it is. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, it smells really cheesy. Okay, so here's my dash waffler. 
Once again, I'm just gonna squirt a little so it doesn't stick. All right, here we go, y'all. I have no idea how this is gonna go. Yeah, I think that's the I think that's a good consistency. You can kind of spread it out a little and then when you close it, it's gonna squish it out even more. Might could have even been a little thinner. All right. Y'all, this is crazy. Let's see what happens. Okay, so while that's cooking over there, now we're gonna head back to the air fryer and I'm gonna try to make a um, apple cinnamon oatmeal cookie using the oatmeal fueling. This is the Orchard Apple Oatmeal Fueling. Now, I love the oatmeal as oatmeal, but I know a lot of people don't. So let's try our hand at making a cookie. Basically, all I'm gonna do is add a little bit of water until it forms a cookie dough batter, put it on a parchment paper in my air fryer, and let's see what happens. Okay, as with all the rest, we're just going to add water. And I'm starting, I filled this up with four tablespoons and let's see how much we need. So like I said, we're gonna make like a cookie dough batter. Oh, I can, you know, that's one thing about this um, oatmeal. As soon as the water really hits it, even when I'm making it as oatmeal, you can smell the apple. I just absolutely love it. It's my favorite. A lot of people like the brown sugar, the maple brown sugar oatmeal. I like that one too, but the apple, of course I love apples. All right, we're getting there. Just a little bit more. I think it's gonna be right at three tablespoons. I've made these into muffins before, but I had to add egg white and baking soda, or baking powder rather. And so this I'm trying to do just adding water. So let's just see, who knows? All right, I think that's a good consistency. Now I'm gonna make, I could make two little cookies. Let me make two little cookies. Here we go. I say I can, I'm gonna try. Well, one's a little bigger than the other, but I think that's okay. I'm just gonna spread it out just a little. but maybe get a little crisp and cook all the way through. I have no idea, y'all. Like I said, I've made muffins, but I had to add some things. But I've had so such good luck lately with just adding water and air frying that that's what I thought. All right, so there we go, two oatmeal cookies. Let's see how they work. While that's cooking, let's check on our cheesy bread. Will it even, oh yeah, it opened, oh wow. Oh wow, that waffled up perfect. Okay. That worked. It looks beautiful, but the truth is in the taste. So let me see, it's kind of warm, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a fork. <laughs> you smell it. it, smells very cheesy. Okay, this seems weird to me y'all, but let, let's just try. But it's definitely cheesy and crispy. I, I like it. I think it's pretty good. Um, I definitely think it would be good if you could add a condiment to it, like the rosemary or maybe a little garlic. That might make this perfect. But, you know, and it's okay to do that. You know, like I said, it, you're okay to add condiments. You just have to be really careful. That's why I wanted to show y'all some things where you don't have to add anything. This is not bad. That's actually not bad at all. I'm actually kind of enjoying that. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna go check on our oatmeal cookie. I don't think it's ready, but while it's still cooking, I wanna show you something that I did that is super simple and super decadent. I'm just moving all over my house, y'all. Don't you might enjoy seeing little Ivy Bug back there. She's just taking a nap. That's her favorite chair. Um, Y'all probably heard me say this before, but you know, Ivy is Lucy's baby. 
Lucy had 11 puppies almost four years ago. Ivy's birthday's in April. And this chair was in our puppy nursery. And that's where I sat and held all 11 puppies until they all, you know, until we found homes for all of them. So this is, Ivy is very accustomed to getting cuddled in that chair. And so it's her favorite spot in the house to lay. <laughs> just, just a little story. Okay, this little hack is super simple. What I did is I mixed up the, I mixed up the brownie mix, Scott's beloved brownie mix, which is th about three tablespoons of water, made it super thick and fudgy, stuck it in the freezer for about 45 minutes. It's been in there while I've been filming all this. It doesn't freeze it, it just thickens it. Let me show you. And I just want you to be able to see. So it's like fudge. It's like, some people will eat this brownie batter, just they'll just mix it up and eat it because they love it. I like to get it cold. Yeah. That's the way to eat a brownie, man. It's really thick. It's just so fudgy. And the little um, yogurt chips in there are just a nice little crunch, sweet crunch every now and then. Those, oh, they're so good. Um, now, if you had a special occasion, and let's say you're celebrating a birthday or a big event, anniversary or whatever, and you wanted something really special, but you didn't want to go off plan. So do this and then PB2 powder, if you like that peanut butter chocolate, PB2 powder is a good thing to use, but just use a half a serving. Just use one tablespoon, then you've only used half of a condiment. Fix this up, put that on top, stick it in your freezer, always put a lid on it, same thing, and it's like a very, very rich Reese's. But if you don't wanna use your condiment, you don't wanna use anything, do it just like this. You know, here's what's so cool. So, I'm diabetic, and so I have to be super careful um, about sugar. I just do. I, I can have sugar, you know, I, I obviously, but you just have to be careful. You have to balance it. So, that's why this program is so good for me, but it's really good for anybody because whether you're diabetic or not, the end game, like ground zero for weight loss and weight management is blood sugar regulation. So I can eat something like this and it's decadent and it's sweet and you think, oh my gosh, that's so, wouldn't be good for me. But y'all, it's full of protein. So it balances the little bit of sugar that it has in there. We don't give up carbs. We probably have 85 to 100 carbs a day on this plan, just on the five and one. So it's not that we give up carbs, we just eat them in the right way. All right, I mean, I, you know, this one I said, you know, as many nibbles, I'm gonna have a whole fueling, but I have a feeling I'm gonna have a little bit more. <laughs> Cause this stuff is good. All right. I checked on the oatmeal cookie. It was looking good, but I decided to flip it over. So I had to use a spatula, really get it under there and turn it over. Cause it was getting pretty done on top, but not on bottom. I'm gonna go check on it again. Probably gonna put it on that top rack to brown it up. Let me go see how it's doing. Okay, y'all, here's the last one. I sure hope they are as good as they smell and look. Say hello, Maisie. There's a window right there, so she's on her perch looking out the window. She's so funny. All right, I had to let them cool off a little. Y'all, they straight up look like oatmeal cookies. They smell like apple. Here we go. Y'all, I like them, but I like the oatmeal. Mm -hmm. So here's what I'm gonna say. If you like the flavor of the oatmeal, but you're just not crazy about the texture, you'll love this. It's got a good, it's crispy on the outside, a little moist on the inside, really good. But if you don't like the flavor of the oatmeal, this isn't gonna change anything because I haven't changed the flavor of it at all. Now, if you, you know, added <laughs> Y'all, I will be so glad when this is over, but I am seriously going to miss that little diaper butt. I'm not kidding. Okay, so anyway, if you can add, you know, you can add a condiment, you know, I'm not telling you you can't. So if you want to juice it up with a little bit of a condiment, you know, whatever, you can. But 
I think these are great. I, these are so good. I'm, I'm thinking these in the morning with a cup of coffee, you know, sitting there on a Saturday morning. These would be perfect. Or even in the afternoon, you know, a hot cup of tea. I don't know. This, they're just, I don't know, comfort food. I love oatmeal. Oatmeal cookies are one of my favorites. And this is good, y'all. Yeah, very good. Okay, yeah, well, now Ivy's going to join us. Okay, you guys, I really hope that y'all... I really hope you have enjoyed this, my favorite fueling hacks. Um, and I, I hope you've enjoyed that I've been able to do it without using any condiments or optional stacks. Just to show you, you don't have to add a bunch of ingredients to change it up a little bit. And here's what I want y'all to realize. Uh, whether you're on the five and one or the five, two and two, the four, two and one, all the different programs uh, that we offer, understand that the fuelings are a tool. Reset your health. You know, maybe you need to detox from you know, a high sugar, high carb, high fat, high salt, you know, diet. Well, these, you know, the fuelings are macro nutritionally formulated to help you do that. Um, but the intention is not for you to eat five fuelings for the rest of your life. Eventually you're going to return to whole foods and this program teaches you how to do that in a way that you'll keep the weight off, okay? If you follow it, there's the big caveat, if you follow it. But the fuelings are an exceptional tool very easy, user-friendly, taste yummy to get you there, okay? And so, you know, it's all right if you want, because you know, you're gonna be eating them, five of them a day. And it's okay if you wanna change it up a little bit. One morning, have oatmeal like oatmeal. And then that afternoon, let's make it into a cookie. Nothing wrong with that, get creative. Think outside the box a little bit. But if you use a condiment or an optional snack or a healthy fat or anything like that, that you're adding to it, just make sure you count it. And as always, check with your coach on any of this that I say, unless I am your coach. <laughs> All right, guys, y'all go enjoy your beautiful Saturday. It is a gorgeous day here today, and I'm about to get outside. This was a lot of fun, and I'm so thankful to my very creative clients who sent me all of these little fueling hacks. All right, guys, y'all have a wonderful, blessed day, and until we get back together again, as always, you guys just stay safe, you stay well, and we will see you next time.